everybody welcome to off the wall my name is mike joined down below we've got fox and off to yeah i did it right the first time over here we've got i am so <laughs> and uh we are getting into part episode two they call it part two part two of the new disney plus star wars series obi-wan kenobi uh full spoilers here if you want to see any non-spoiler thoughts go watch our episode one part one uh review we we do some non-spoilery thoughts on the first two episodes there um but getting straight into so let me here i'm gonna put up the like just yeah getting it out of the way right away just letting you know now um getting straight into part two here we are picking up where we left off with that with part one which is uh obi-wan has taken this transport to this planet that i'm calling star wars blade runner because that's what it looks like um, to go try and find the recently kidnapped young Princess Leia Organa. Um, and we land on, in this city planet thing, and we kind of just get going right away. Um, going into this episode, Boggs, how were you feeling in terms of anticipation for what we were going to see, and, and how did you feel coming out of it at the end? Yeah, uh, you know, obviously leaving Tatooine, I want to see what he's doing. You know, obviously he's going to save Leia or, or try and get her back to Bail Organa. And yeah, just to see kind of what uh, kind of problems he will entail because obviously he is in hiding um, and how, how he can avoid himself and also save her at the same time. Um, overall, you know, I kind of liked the episode, to be honest. Um, it was kind of at times quite fast paced and like a, a an action based episode but you know i kind of felt i got a vibe of like a star wars rebels episode plenty of you know these episodes involved uh, like kanan or ezra or ezra and sabine just go on a mission throughout a city and try and save someone or obtain some kind of object or do some kind of mission and report back and, and i felt like that was kind of like you know i really like rebels so it was kind of that vibe um you know i did not like the ending um the last shot i did of course but up on the last two minutes of this episode was really bad was was really rough to get through um but uh, up until then you know i, I thought it was at times it was light-hearted um some of the stuff between leia and obi-wan wasn't absolutely amazing um the the physical stuff but um yeah i mean i, I liked him kind of going through the city and 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 counting different problems and that kind of thing and avoiding trouble and uh it, it was okay it was okay to be honest um but yeah the ending really dragged it down for me um which i'll get into in a minute what about you so how did you feel going in and how did you feel coming out so uh, after watching the first episode i had a little bit more of reservations going into this episode i enjoyed it a lot more i've really loved the aesthetics of this episode you're getting a little bit more of that scum and villainy vibe uh i like to someone coming up like Hey, you want to buy some spice? And he's like, no, I'm looking for my daughter. And he was like, that, oh, you'll never find way, her. That is you and McGregor's daughter in real life. Oh, really? The girl that does it. Yeah, yeah. That gives <laughs> okay. him the free spice. All right. Cool. Later. Now it's that the is, best so. episode ever. I'm. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> but but uh, I was someone daughter. I was someone's daughter once, kind of thing. Like I loved that little exchange there. Um, I loved when we saw the uh, clone trooper. I was like, who is this? We're going to find out who is this, who this person is. Are they going to recognize Obi-Wan? Uh, hope we get a little bit more of that, or is that just an Easter egg? Who knows? But it was a, a fun episode. I like seeing Obi-Wan like, with some more like combat skills. That Because typically what we saw in the um, prequel series is him with a lightsaber. So we're seeing him now with his fist and kind of like fighting, boxing a little bit more with uh, opponents kind of to not show that he is a Jedi. So I enjoy this episode a lot until kind of the ending, probably for the same reasons as you guys. Um, but it was a fun episode for me. Uh, yeah, I was riding high on this episode up until the last couple of minutes. Um, I love kind of like what you mentioned, Sol, is I love that Obi-Wan has adopted a new style of defending himself that he is clearly still just not used to 
doing because he's a little clumsy about it. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he makes a point. They make a point of having him get his hand sliced when he takes on a, a Dathomarian man. Uh, yeah. he, horns coming out of his head, and you can he, you can tell that it's just it's a little sloppy, and he doesn't quite know what he's doing. Doesn't sell the intimidation a hundred percent like when he pulls a blaster on Camille Nanjiani, who we'll get into in a sec. But I also think that's by design because it's not that that's not his bag. That's not who he is. He's having to step outside of his own comfort zone because even though he's lived all these ten years on Tatooine, he's just kind of kept to himself and not made trouble for anybody. Um, seeing the clone trooper was really cool. And something I didn't mention in, in our episode one review, I want to mention real quick is this is the first time we're seeing clone troopers in actual armor. What I mean is in episodes two and three, anytime you saw a clone Animated. trooper, yeah. it was all CGI. Mm -hmm. So when we see them in the order 66, uh, flashback, those are guys in armor. Mm -hmm. This guy is Tamura Morrison in armor. I think that's a really cool production design detail that like we're getting back to trying to do as much practical as we can we're not trying to make this glossy cgi fest that kind of was the prequels for the most part um even later we see a big dinosaur guy going to hunt down obi-wan and it was a it was a big prosthetic max thing with a little bit of cgi um i really enjoyed camille nanjiani in this i i i've heard some people online kind of ended uh, i thought I thought he sold it really well. I 100% believe there would be somebody like this out there right now. Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend to just a couple little parlor tricks here and there. And like, yeah, look, who, who, how are they, are they gonna tell me I'm wrong? They don't know how a Jedi mind trick works. We know, like, we know he's full of it, but they're not gonna know. Um, and it's it's kind of weird to see him doing conning people, but for good reasons. Um, <laughs> So it was, it was, there was, I think a lot to like in this episode, the aesthetic, especially with, with the whole Blade Runner vibe, it really did a lot for me. And then the last two minutes for me personally, this episode completely fell apart. Um, but I think that's also going to be entirely dependent on what happens in episode three. Episode three could make or break episode two for me, which is a weird thing to say, but I think we should go ahead and get into this. Um, I want I really want to uh, get get our negatives out of the way so we can end on a more positive note here as best we can. Um, and I'm gonna start this one off. Um, I'm a big rebels fan. Boggs, I know you're a big rebels fan. Soul rebels fan. love rebels. Yeah, so her stabbing the Grand Inquisitor through the stomach uh, really didn't sit right with me because Holman needs to live to die later in rebels. and I'm I'm anticipating we'll see him come back because as far as casting, like the credits go, he's credited pretty high up the list on this. So I'm assuming he's, and nobody ever really dies. He, I'm assuming he's coming back, especially if Ahsoka is meant to be kind of a continuation of where Rebels left off anyway. If he's dead, though, I am not going to be, I'm not going to, because I, A, I don't want them retconning Rebels. And and B, when you, when you know, when you talk about the fact that the original writer for this series left because of how he wanted to write the season and how, oh, we can't do that because it doesn't jive with how Rebels played out. It's like, well, then what the hell is this? Um, Also, with the third sister's little intimidation game, with obi-wan there on the dock i will say this when she was just being quiet and creepy like this oh you didn't know i was way more sold on her it's when she's trying to be loud that i think she struggles when she's just being quiet and sinister and mysterious like this i think she does fine it's when she's trying to go for boisterous and like high school theater intimidating i i don't buy it for a second um, so that whole sequence, now the last shot with the whole Vader and the tube thing, fantastic, 10 out of 10, no notes. Um, but the whole last two minutes on the, on the dock did, did the, did nothing for me, did less than nothing for me. Um, now that I've, now that I've ranted about that a little bit, uh, Saul, how about you? What, what was not sitting right with you with this episode? Literally the second she stabs him through the stomach with that lightsaber. I was like, what the <laughs> expletive there? I was like, I even, I think I wrote in my um, notes, I was like, 
this is such a bitch ass moment. Like, first <laughs> off, like he can't be dead. If they do retcon, I'm gonna be pissed. But also, like, this is the Grand Inquisitor of what we know from Rebels. Like, this wouldn't happen, I feel, with his character. So I was just like, okay, he looks like crap. And now he's also, like, going out kind of like crap in this episode. So I was like, this is not driving well with me. And I will agree, like, those quiet moments, you're like, if you did this the whole time with the third sister... Or Rava, I think is also Riva. her name. Riva, Riva. Um, I'd be like, okay, I'd be fine with this. But the fact that she does get boisterous, her voice is not menacing when she starts getting loud, that it kind of kills the moments that she's a little better in for me. Because I'm just like, all I'm remembering is you yelling and not being intimidating. And Boggs, what about you? What what was what was just not what were you not feeling this one around? Yeah, a few things, to be honest. Um, don't love the way Obi-Wan has to kind of find himself slash fighting with his fists. Um, it's just devaluing the character. You know, he's a master Jedi. He's not a Jedi Knight. He's not a Padawan. He's not someone who's, you know, uh, not strong in the Force. He's a master integral character of Star Wars. And just devaluing his character and getting kind of... Uh, handled by goons i didn't love um well i understand he's in uh, ptsd but you know he's the things that he's done and what he's going to do is way beyond these guys and i just didn't love the um the physical limitations it's showing he he'd have um the first scene of kameo nanjiani when he you know i do love kameo nanjiani to be honest but the first scene of him, I didn't like, you know, when he's helping the family out. I didn't get the humor um, when he's using the magnets and things like that. I didn't really enjoy his interaction with Obi-Wan then. The second one I did like, you know, when he acknowledges Obi-Wan um, with Leia, you know, because he, he, he's seen this is Obi-Wan Kenobi on the holograms and he's offered him to support. And then he's kind of said, yeah, you know. Have I done bad things yet? Yeah. Do I like credits? Sure. You know, I saw the Camille yeah. and I thought, okay, this works. Yeah, because the first thing I did, I do not like Camille and Gianni in Eternals, to be honest. Um, and I got that Eternals vibe in that first scene. But that scene, I was like, yes, that's it. And I kind of like the Raver stuff as well, even though that was shorter. But I was, I, I, I was like, oh, thankfully, it worked on the second scene and it helped him out there. So, and then from the next part, kind of, I didn't like, uh, well, firstly, it was Leia running from everyone like she run from the kind of bounty hunters whatever they're called the way she's kind of escaping from him again another grown man that she just runs away from she got like four speed or something um and then on the rooftops and then um i did like how he saved the last second um showing that he's rusty but you know just doing enough there and then watching uh revered like do kind of the batman type Parkour. yeah I've, i was like what is going off here and not uh, yeah it, it looked silly to me to be honest her moving through and then her consistently not listening to the other inquisitors again was just really frustrating the grand inquisitor yes he doesn't look great but he is the most acceptable character out of the inquisitors for me he is bearable and he is somewhat like the character in rebels and stuff and in the comics even though it doesn't really look like him but there's resemblance there, that's believable but the, the rever character just not listening to him doing her own thing going behind their back to get a plan which was kind of smart in a way to get obi-wan to lure him out um she was right in the end to to, to get him there but uh, just consistently not listening and then you know her being the one to tell for you guys is talking about the the uh, hitting him with the lightsaber the she is the one that tells him that Anakin is still alive and it is, you know, Vader, etc. How does she know? She is his uh, kind of Sith, Sith kind of... Uh, She's a subordinate. Yeah. How does she know that's Anakin? She should not. Right. If he knew that was Anakin, if he knew, uh, in my, you know, my understanding of Star Wars, if you know, really only the Emperor and a few other people were thrown, a um, mm. couple of others knew that was Anakin Skywalker. Not this little um you know inquisitor uh, and she's the one that tells everyone i was shocked uh, like this is how he finds out i was really 
gutted and disappointed. And then from there, she goes and takes out the Grand Inquisitor. I'm presuming he's not dead because that will completely uh, tear apart canon, which Dave Filoni, you know, showrun Star Wars Rebels. So I'm assuming they're not going to do that uh, because, you know, uh, you know, Sword of Star Wars Rebels, he does die at the end of season one, which is about five years before A New Hope. This is about nine years before A New Hope. So I'm assuming he's going to, you know, uh, he would have survived that. Um, or he is going to survive that because, like, he's a well-known actor as well. I presume he, he wouldn't just be used for two episodes yeah. like that. So I, I'm assuming he's not dead. Um, yeah, I thought that was terrible, to be honest. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that were my kind of my main negatives. Um, but yeah, uh, there were a few positives. But overall, it was a really bitter uh, way of learning. This is how Obi Wan finds out. I was really, really, really disappointed. Um, and on top of that, you know, um, the scene with. You know, we, we kind of uh, alluded to it, you know, the fact that Leia now knows Obi-Wan and yeah, when she yeah. does leave the message clearly in A New Hope, she is as if she doesn't know Obi-Wan, as if you know my father, you know, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope, you know, you, you helped my father in the Clone Wars. She doesn't mention anything about her or, you know, that relationship with her. And I, I thought what Sol thought, you know, um, Obviously, we were speaking before we started, but she mentioned Ben a few times. But obviously, it's clearly you know, uh, Commander Gianni's character clearly mentions is your Obi Wan Kenobi, and it's like, are we who you know the writing here? I'm not like I was really confused with that. Uh, that that's what I mean. That issue on top of the issue with um, you know Reva being the one to tell him it's Anakin. Even the way she said Anakin Skywalker, I just thought it was really weird. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like her delivery of the line. I, I really think she's irritating as a character, to be honest. So I'm struggling with that character, but they're unfortunately they are big negatives. Um, but uh, yeah, it was tough to get through. It's tough to see as a you know major Star Wars fan to to learn that that was the way he finds out. Yeah, it's yeah. which is not in one of the one older of the books, um, uh, uh, Dark Lords of the Sith, I think it's called. Uh, Obi Wan finds out that vader's alive because it's on the news like he's he's at he's at like most eisley bar and there's a news report about whatever incursion vader was leading and he's like oh my god vader's still alive because yeah at this point like vader's not a well-known figure in the galaxy he's known in the upper echelon of the political system as being the emperor's right hand but like it's not like it's not like there's you know po pictures of him at the airport um, I'm not sure, you know, Mike. I'm not sure. Like, he, yeah, I agree. He is the Emperor's right hand man. Yeah. In the, you know, in the, this is ten years after, you know, Revenge of the Sith, right. as the as the Emperor's right hand man for ten years. Yeah. I feel like Obi Wan would know, or at least heard Vader is still alive because he knows Vader is that's Anakin's name because he sees right. the, uh, you know, that the hologram at the end of uh, or towards the end of. Revenge of the Sith of, you know, uh, Palpatine kind of knighting him as Lord Vader rise and stuff. He sees that. So he knows his name is Vader. And I just, he, he would have heard of a Vader being around for 10 years. Yeah. That, again, that's a really continue, you know, uh, a story, the way they've written that. I, I was like, I wanted to pull my hair out some of the, the dialogue here. Yeah. As that we're going through. But anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, I was making excuses. I was just like, yeah, okay, yeah, maybe he sees Vader, but they could have given someone else the name Vader. Like, I was trying to make, like, oh, what's ways that they can explain? Like, I was saying before we started recording, I was just like, oh, he only ever said his name was Ben. Maybe she doesn't make the connection. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And the second that Kamel Nanjiani's character, uh, Haja, I believe is uh, his uh, character name, says Obi Wan, I'm like, Ugh, are you kidding me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the with the with the him not knowing about Vader thing, only thing I can think of is we get that moment in the in the first episode because we know that the M, the Empire because Tatooine's out on the outer rim. Tatooine was always out beyond the Republic, the reach of the Republic. So it could just be and they and they say when the Inquisitors land, they're like, "You guys don't have jurisdiction here. Like we we, we don't recognize the Empire here." So yeah, it could the be, Empire isn't at full capacity at this point. Yeah. I'll get that through this episode. Yeah. So so. Could be some of that as well. Yeah. Again, grasping at straws. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think she needed to name drop Anakin Skywalker. It could have just been, I'm going to take you to Lord Vader. That Because as soon as she says Vader, 
you and McGregor immediately sells like, wait, who? I'm sorry, what? Say that again. Right. Um, she didn't need a name drop. So I'm I'm hoping there's an explanation for how she knows who he is coming later on. Right. That's kind of why I said my final feelings are going to depend on what we get next. Um, but that being said, we, we hit our negatives. Let's let's hit our positives real quick, though. Let's let's talk about what we did like. I loved the aesthetic. I loved Kamel Nanjiani in this. Um, and I really liked as much as it creates problematic storytelling. I really liked the interactions between Obi Wan and Leia. I, I thought it was such an interesting dynamic. It, it gave me feelings of like Leon the professional hmm. a little bit. Um, I, with I Natalie liked, Portman, of course. Yeah, with Natalie Portman. Um, I really liked their dynamic a lot. Um, I liked that she is very much because because he has that moment with her where he's like you remind me of someone and right. at first you're thinking like is he gonna say anakin and he's like he's thinking of he's thinking of pat he remind i literally thought of soka for a second to be honest oh, that's good but Some i love people, you know you couldn't even say sabine yeah I mean, Ren is, he's love interest in clone wars maybe but yeah, yeah i i think it was um padme as well yeah, yeah it was definitely padme but yeah at first i was like is he talking about ahsoka yeah <laughs> But I just I love that because he gets to ha he gets to kind of in his own little way have that whole you you remind me of your mother, and and it's it's also a great way to acknowledge the relationship he had with Padme as well as Anakin. Like his life wasn't just Anakin, Padme was his friend too, and he lost her just like everybody else did. Um, so yeah, my big positives were Camille Nanjiani's uh, parts. Um, the the big action set piece I thought was really great when everyone's trying to take out uh, Obi Wan and he's kind of in no man's land up there on the roof. I liked seeing him reestablish his connection with the force for the first time and how it was a struggle because he's cut it off for 10 years. And yeah, it's not like getting back on a bike. It's like that was he was winded just trying to stop her from falling, you know, a few feet. Um, and then, yeah, the interaction with him and Leia, I thought was was really great as well. Uh, Boggs, what was what what left you what left you smiling here? Yeah, it was definitely the line that he says to Leia about, oh, you know, a little conversation that they have about, oh, you remind me of someone, you know, like a leader or whatever. And um, that's how simple it is, you know, just to pull at the heartstrings and do, just do something like, like Ahsoka telling Luke, you remind me, you're so much like your father. It's just so simple. We have these legacy characters. Just give us the right dialogue. I'm, I'm, I'm just really simple guy. That's all I need. Just little things like that. Uh, interaction between two characters that we've known for 40 something years. That's all we want. That's all I want. Okay, a couple of lightsabers, and that's it. These new characters, um, and their dialogue, yeah, and just it's just not this is not for me so far, to be honest. And uh, yeah, Kamel, uh, I liked his character. The second half of his characters, uh, I liked, um, but I did like the idea, as you said, Mike, of someone pretending to be a Jedi to for their own benefit. I've always thought that. I've never seen that. I believe it. I've never seen that in canon or or, or in legends about people pretending to be Jedi's. You know, for you know, for fraud purposes or whatever, I thought definitely an underworld, you know, gangster potential, you know, uh, in a kind of scum of villainy thing that there would be people doing that, you know, fake force users and stuff. So I did like that they incorporated that, the idea of that. Um, and yeah, I did, I, I was laughing at some of his other dialogue the second time. Uh, I thought, there he is, that's the, that's the Kamehameha Nanjiani. Cause I was worried for him, his style, as a comedic actor, I was really worried about him appearing because you know I really like the guy um, and his work. So the uh, next, I don't know. After that, um, oh, of course, I have to say the ending scene. You know, I was, I literally went from like, oh my god, what am I watching with Rebel to like, I was just like waiting for just something to happen, and you know, cut off by you know, we see Hayden Christian, uh, Christensen, and you know the scarring that he has and. He looks great. Like he physically looked intimidating. I was like, oh, this is what we're here for. You know, this is for me, you know, I'll be honest. I don't care about Reva. I don't care about the Inquisitors. I want to see Obi-Wan. I want to see Anakin. I want to see the legacy characters and I want to see them interact. And, um, you know, Bail Organa stuff was great. And the first episode and Uncle Owen stuff, that's the, that is this Kenobi story that I had in my head kind of for, you know, since 2005, uh, even before that, whatever. So, um, the, the new characters, unsurprisingly, has not lived up to the expectation. Um, but yes, moving forward, uh, there's hopefully a lot to look forward to the next episode. But yeah, there's a couple of stand -up. And like I said, I do like the general street. Um, as you said, the, the kind of the 
Obi Wan on a mission vibe. You know, again, I've envisioned things like that over the years, and hoping we'd see them kind of stories like on the run with Inquisitors chasing him. So I did glad we get that again. It wasn't perfect, um, but uh, yeah, and I did like him and Leia's back and forth as well, um, and getting to know each other, even though it almost completely breaks the canon. Um, it was nice seeing, uh, you know, you McGregor do his thing. Um, but yeah, a few positives, but yeah, I, I'm trying to uh, put a good spin on this episode. It it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work with the greater story at large, but it was nice yeah. to see. Uh, yeah. Sol, what what about you? Like like biggest thing that made you smile? Command on Gianni. Okay. <laughs> I love oh, Command on Gianni. Gianni. <laughs> Gianni as um, an actor. I actually did like his first scene, uh, so that's opposite of Boggs, but I liked all of his scenes. And he's the best, uh, outside of like seeing Obi-Wan again, Like he was the best part of both of these episodes for me. I really enjoyed, he kind of stole the scene for me. Um, I just, I love that fact too, of like him just being a trickster and him like pretending to be a Jedi. This is something that like probably would happen in these kinds of uh, areas. And I like, and I love morally gray er uh, characters because he did end up helping that woman and their, her child, but he also got some money out of it. And I liked at the end, he's like, I'm going to help people, but I'm going to get my money too. Do I like credits? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, yeah, I'm I'm I'm, there, I'm right there with you guys. It's 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 there's a I think there's a lot to like. There's just also a lot not to like. I think I think it's hitting more than it's missing, and the stuff that I wanted it like the stuff I wanted this show to give me, it's giving me, but it's also giving me some stuff I don't want. It's it's like I'll I'll take I'll take the I'll take the Owen and the Obi Wan, and 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 this and this, but you can keep you can keep the Inquisitors. I don't. I don't need that. Un un again, unless it all turns around in part three, and crazier yeah. things have happened. Look, they made. If they she's made amazing three. in the third episode, then we'll be like, "Oh, I'll I'm so up. sorry." Yeah, like she's great. <laughs> I'll shut up. I will shut up. But but in this, the way the third episode ended, you know, I'm I'm really hoping for a kind of a Vader episode. You know, uh, yeah. his flashbacks yeah. or you know his yeah. what he's been doing the last ten years. You know, same what we've had with Obi Wan. You know, to have with with that Anakin, and you know, even getting some Clone Wars or um, you know uh, Obi Wan and Anakin flashbacks, and you know, pre maybe unseen stuff that we've we've not seen, or uh, his to hear his thoughts and his dialogue with the Inquisitors and stuff. So, um, yeah, I am looking forward to the next episode definitely. I think we're getting Vader a lot sooner than I anticipated, um, and I think that you don't because if they wanted to have Vader in this, they could have done what they did in Rogue One cast a body in a suit and have james earl jones do some voiceover yeah they went out of their way to cast hayden christensen so that's got me believing like we're gonna get we're gonna get some anakin in this i wouldn't be shocked and and again going into like how does she know who the anakin skywalker is vader you know the grand inquisitor mentions like you know you're not one of us you're not like the rest of us so i'm almost wondering if she's one of like those younglings we saw escape at the beginning of episode mm -hmm. one and there was something with her and anakin skywalker pre-suit as darth vader she hears him called lord vader or something like that by by the troopers there i think we're gonna see some more of anakin during 66 that we wasn't in the movie that maybe they brought him back and put him in hair and makeup for so I, don't, I don't know. At this point, I'm playing with house money, and this is the kind of stuff I'd like to see. But we want to know what you guys thought, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see going forward in episode in, in part three. I sound like I'm talking about the movies. Uh, let us know. All of our Twitter stuff's down uh, in the description, so hit us up there, and you can also subscribe to the podcast feed as well. The link is there as well. Uh, and until next time, we'll be back with, with, with part three of this, and check out everything else we got here on the Off the Wall channel. Uh, for Boggs and Soul, my name is Mike, and thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you again next time. Bye.